Well, I spent a few minutes identifying the bark and leaves and acorns of a chestnut oak and did some c comparing with the scarlet oak since they same, share the same habitat. Let's just take a look at a chestnut oak grove here. I'm on the top of the same ridge that I was filming a few minutes ago. And this is probably an area that is prone to brush fires and um, the chestnut oak is dominant here. And they aren't that big either, which means it probably hasn't been that long since this area was, was burned by a brush fire. Um, this one here is maybe eight, 10 inches in diameter, but again has the huge furrows. Those are two to three inches deep on this size tree. And the bigger trees have even deeper furrows, but there's one chestnut oak, two and three right there. And then several in the background and one over here. Again with the deep furrows. And this whole ridge top is covered in them. We've got one here that's not too big yet and the one right behind it. So when they really get established, they can be the dominant oak tree on these really dry ridge tops. The plants you'll often find growing in the same habitat as this green briar. And it's hard to see the green on this dim day, but it is a, uh, a green vine plant. It does get foliage in the summertime. It gets some blueberries that are unedible um, on some of the vines. And it can create thickets that are almost impenetrable in places. This isn't too thick here. You could actually get through this if you had to. But it shares the same habitat. And I got chestnut leaves, oak leaves all over the ground here. And I believe I failed to mention in that last video comparison that the chestnut oak is actually, even though it has a bark that might resemble a red oak, it's in the white oak group or white oak family. And if you were to saw it up, the interior wood, the heart wood would actually be a lighter color. Um, a light tan color like other white oak trees. And they can get quite large and it could be harvested for timber. So here's our leaves. Kind of a mottled look here. And another plant I'm going to comment on because it's, you know, there's always something coming and going in these forests. And if this land is not burned in the near future, the next few generations, this may actually become the dominant tree here. But most of these red maples here are just getting established, but they're taking over. And I don't see any chestnut oak trees coming in. They're all getting older in the red maple. In the wintertime, I can tell by the hue. Boy, it's a little, little dim today, but there's a red bud. Let's see if it'll come into focus here. On this branch. And if we can get it to come into focus, there's a little better. You can see the red hue on the bud. The deer like to munch on those in the winter time. So the bark is a gray color like a sugar maple. I really couldn't tell them apart except the sugar maple doesn't have that red hue. And uh, the bud for next year's leaves would be um, the same color as sugar maple syrup or maple syrup. It's a brown color. So that's how you can tell them apart in the winter time. Also, this habitat is probably pretty doggone dry for a sugar maple to survive. So that alone kind of helped me narrow it down. But red maples can grow in swamp forests and they can grow in these mountaintops and they can grow just about anywhere. They are not specialists. They're um, very good at fitting in wherever, wherever there's a place for them to fit in. Here's another one right here with that reddish hue. So we got a chestnut oak forest with some red maple trying, trying to make the inroads here and become the, the, the next generation of trees.